Welcome to LG Ministry. We are glad you have chosen to watch our program today. My name is Coogan Collins and I am the minister at the Long Grove Church of Christ. Our hope and desire is that you will open up your Bible and study along with us. So let's get to our lesson. Jesus said in Luke 9 verse 23, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. There are many who claim to follow Jesus, but they really do not. And there are others who sincerely want to follow him, but they have not learned how. This lesson is designed to teach you what it means to follow Jesus. This is a very simple lesson, but it is a practical one that you can teach to others. Our lesson will focus on what Jesus taught in Luke 9 and verse 23. First, Jesus said, If anyone desires to come after me, there are several things we learn about following Jesus from these few words. We learn that anyone can follow after Jesus. There is no select group of people who have been chosen to follow Him. This teaches against the false notion of predestination that some religious groups teach, which says that some are predestined to be saved and some are predestined to be lost. However, as Jesus said, discipleship is for anyone who desires it which is why we see Jesus commanding His disciples to proclaim the saving message of Christ to everyone. Mark 16, verse 15, And He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Also, Jesus said in Matthew 11, verse 28, Come to Me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take My yoke upon you and learn from Me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light." We can clearly see that Jesus' invitation to follow after Him is available for everyone. So no one can rightly say that they are too sinful to become a follower of Christ. We also learn that following after Jesus is optional because He told people to come to Him if they desire to do so. Since God has given us a free will, we can choose to follow after Jesus or not. But God wants you to choose to follow after Jesus, which is why we read in 2 Peter 3 and verse number 9, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 1 Timothy 2 verse 3, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. From the pen of Peter and Paul, we once again see that salvation and the opportunity to follow Jesus is available for everyone who is willing to accept it. Of course, many will refuse the invitation to follow Him, but some will make the right decision and follow after Him. Jesus illustrates this well in Matthew 22, verse number 1. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding, and they were not willing to come. Again he sent out other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted cattle are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious, and he sent out his armies, destroying those murderers, and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highway, and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. 
Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. Back to our original phrase, if anyone desires to come after me, we also notice that Jesus is the one that we are to follow. We're not to follow after a man or some man's teaching. No, we are to follow Jesus and his teachings because only he can give us access to the Father in heaven. John 14, verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. As Jesus said, if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. John 8, verse 24. The second thing that we learn from our original verse is when Jesus said, let him deny himself. This means that if we want to be a follower of Jesus, that we must deny our carnal pleasure, our pride, and anything else that comes between us and God. We must be willing to humble ourselves before the Lord and to put our trust in Him. To deny ourselves goes hand in hand with repentance. In order for us to follow Christ, we must make a change in our lives. We cannot continue to live for ourselves once we become a Christian. As Paul said, Galatians 2 and verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Sometimes we might struggle in our walk of faith, but if we keep reminding ourselves of what Paul has just stated, it helps us to remember who we have dedicated our lives to. If we do not make the commitment to serve God and follow the teachings found in his word, then we have not learned how to deny ourselves so that we can follow Jesus. I don't think anybody should follow Jesus without considering the cost of discipleship, as Jesus explains in Luke 14, verse 25. Now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? Lest after he laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Jesus is just emphasizing how we must put God first, even before our family. Now, I know this can be a tough thing to do because our family is our blood. They are who we would rely on if we are in a bind. However, if we become Christians, we must count the cost of being a disciple of Christ. Sometimes this means it will put us at odds with some of our family members, especially if they are bitter about what we stand for. As great as it is to have your family on your side, it is much greater to have God on your side. You must be willing to stand up for the Lord regardless of what your family may think about you or how they may treat you. Jesus also illustrates the importance of making the decision to follow him by giving us two examples. First was the building of a tower and second was going to war. Of course, the point is, is that you better count the cost of what it takes to be a Christian. It's not something that you should just decide to do one day because it sounds good. Unfortunately, some become Christians without really considering what it's going to cost them. When people do this, they are like the following two types of soils. In Matthew 13, verse 20, But he who received the seed on the stony place, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. This is why it is so important that you really think about what you are committing yourself to do 
when you say you are ready to become a Christian. If you do not count the cost of discipleship, your devotion to God will not last. You'll be like those people who were following Jesus because they liked what He said and they liked how He provided food for them. But when they began to hear Him say things that they didn't like and didn't understand, they turned away from Him as we read in John 6 and verse 53. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, Does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe, and who would betray him. And he said, Therefore I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. This is exactly what will happen to those who do not count the cost of following Jesus. As soon as following Jesus gets too hard because we don't like what His Word says or we can't bring ourselves to deny our worldly pleasures, then we will turn away from Jesus, which is worse than if we had never believed in the first place, according to Peter. 2 Peter 2 verse 21. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit and a sow having washed to her wallowing in the mire. Though many of Jesus' disciples turned from him that day, some were willing to stand with him as we read in John 6 verse 67. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. The quicker we can realize that eternity in heaven can only come through Jesus, the easier it will be for us to deny ourselves and to follow after Him, knowing that He has the words of eternal life. While it is great if you counted the cost before you became a Christian, we need to continue to count the cost of being a disciple of Christ as we grow as Christians because there is no way for you to anticipate all the things that life will throw at you. So I believe it would do us all good to remind ourselves of why we are so committed to God despite our circumstance. When we continue to focus on God and our eternity in heaven, it will help us a great deal in our Christian walk of faith. The third thing that we learn about following Jesus from our original verse is when Jesus said, and take up his cross daily. The third thing that we learn about following Jesus from our original verse is when Jesus said, and take up his cross daily. I remember back when I was a teenager that I went and visited my friend in Dallas. And he took me to a local hangout where all kinds of people would park their cars and do their own thing. Some would listen to music, others were showing off their detailed engines and cars. I even saw one man playing video games on a big screen TV in the back of his truck. One thing I noticed was is that a group of people that were there, they were going around and they were handing out religious cards and one of the men was dragging this huge cross behind him. When Jesus tells us that we must take up his cross daily, he did not have in mind us taking up a literal cross and dragging it around behind us like this man was that I saw. No, what he meant by this is that we need to take up the work of Christ and do it daily. Being a follower of Christ is not something that we do on Sunday and Wednesday and, and neglect all the other days. No, if we want to be a follower of Christ, we must do it daily. 
We cannot be the kind of person who acts like a Christian on Sunday and Wednesday and then looks like the world the rest of the time. I've used this real life example before, but it fits perfectly with what I'm talking about. So I'm going to use it again. Back when I used to work on copiers, I ran across a preacher in Ardmore who decided that there was a difference between church and business. According to him, his computer got struck by lightning and he was trying to convince my boss to falsify a claim about how much it was worth so that the insurance would pay more to replace it. The truth of the matter was is that his laptop was not fried. The only thing wrong with it is that it needed a new power cord, which didn't cost that much at all. This man made it known that he planned on keeping the money for himself even though the church paid for the computer. That was just one of his shady deals that he tried to pull off with my boss, but my boss would never participate in his scams. While you may be thinking about how horrible this man was, there are many people who claim to be Christians that do similar things in their lives. They act like Christians when they assemble with the saints, but everywhere else they act just like the world. I hope that none of us are like that because we cannot be pleasing to God if we wear two hats in our lives. Think about the impression that preacher made on me. He made it to where I would not trust him further than I could throw him, as the saying goes. So we need to be very careful about not ruining our influence for God by our sinful behaviors. As we think about this idea of taking up the cross daily, this also means that there is much work to be done for the Lord. But we must be willing to do it. As Jesus said in Luke 10 and verse 2, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into His harvest. If we are going to be followers of Jesus, we must be laborers in His kingdom and be doers of His word. All we have to do to see what it takes to take up the cross daily is to look at the examples found in the New Testament. For example, shortly before Jesus ascended into heaven, He told His disciples this in Acts 1 and verse number 8, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to Me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Jesus did His part. He lived on this earth and did so without sinning. He fulfilled the law of Moses and made a new covenant that is available for everyone. Our duty as Christians is to take His message to the world. Just as Jesus told His disciples to spread His word through all those areas and throughout the known world, we are to do the same. When you continue reading through the book of Acts, you will see how Jesus' disciples picked up that cross daily and proclaimed Jesus' message to the world. Finally, back in our original verse, Jesus mentions once again that we must follow Him. He is our example to live by. He pleased the Father, and on several occasions the Father spoke out from heaven, expressing His approval for Jesus. One example of this can be seen in Matthew 3, verse 17. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. We know that Jesus has paved the way for us to be able to make it to heaven. He has shown us that He has conquered death and the power of sin. If we will follow after Him and spread the good news about Him, we too will conquer death and the power of sin. Paul explains it this way, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 20, But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive, but each one in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, afterward those who are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death, for he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted. Now when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him. Then God may be all in all. The question becomes, are you willing to do what it takes to follow after Jesus? Perhaps a better question is, have you been doing what it takes to follow after Jesus? Or have you been slipping up and allowing worldly things to get between you and God? 
If so, I hope you'll make today the day you recommit yourself to God and put Him first in your life. Because without that commitment, you're not really following after Christ. As we come to the close of our lesson, I want to proclaim Jesus' words once again. Luke 9, verse 23. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. I hope you found today's lesson helpful. No matter what lesson I preach, I want you to test what I say or any person says about God's Word by comparing what is being said to what the Scriptures actually say. Don't ever be lazy in this area because it's too important to simply trust in what man is saying because we are all human and we're capable of being wrong. One thing we know for sure is that God's Word will not lead us astray. So always trust in it. As Psalm 146.3 says, Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man, in whom there is no help. Psalm 18, verse 30, As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in Him. I will always do my best to preach the truth, but I hope if you catch me teaching error that you will contact me so that we can discuss the matter. If you would like to learn more about LG Ministry and the congregation I preach at, feel free to visit our website at lgchurchofchrist.com. On our website, you will find a lot of material that can help you with your spiritual growth. On our main page, you will find an online correspondence course you can take that will walk you through the basics. On our sermon page, you will find just about every sermon I have preached at my local congregation. You will also find some audio sermons and Bible class materials that you are free to study and use. On our article page, you will find tracts that you can read and print off and articles that have been written for our local paper. Finally, on our video page, you will find all the new video lessons that I have made, including the one that you're watching right now. I know that we live in a fast-paced world where it seems like we don't have the time to do much of anything, but I want to encourage you to find time out of each day to sit down and to study God's Word. Life is great, and there's nothing wrong with being busy. But we must be careful that we don't become so busy that we fail to take time to feed ourselves spiritually from God's Word. We must remember that God is supposed to be our number one priority in life. If you find my lessons to be helpful, be sure and tell people about our program so that others can hear sound lessons from the Bible. I hope you have a blessed day.